Uh, so going to be a really quick little uh, <coughs> quick little snippet um, of code for today. Uh, today what we want to look at is we want to look at just a couple of things real quick. Um, some skills that you're going to need for your four in a row project. I just want to try to teach you all the skills. Um, no fancy slide for this one. Uh, just uh, just going to do some basic things. Uh, so we recently finished making um, the UI view properties project. Um, and we're going to add a little bit more to it. Just so I don't mess up my original project, I'm actually going to go ahead and make a copy of it. Um, and then I'll just add the word um, sounds. Um, what I wanted to do today is I just wanted to go over um, playing a sound. Um, and I also wanted to talk about the um, when the animation is complete. Um, how do you go about calling a function from there? So those are the two quickie topics in this, we'll call it a mini lecture. Um, so just to kind of remember what this app does, uh, what it does is it lets you manipulate um, a UI view um, so that you can <clears throat> learn about uh, moving the center, um, increasing the bounds, changing the transform, things like that. One thing that you're going to need for your, for your four in a row project is when you run an animation, so let's say I hit the reset and I run an animation, when it finishes, um, sometimes you want to run some code. Um, so let's do a little code snippet um, so that we figure out how that works. Um, so to figure out how that works, uh, let's go ahead and open up um, Help on UI View. And you can see that when it comes to animating views, um, there are a bunch of functions that are useful. Um, next time we'll get into blocks. Um, but the one that I, we're focusing on now is we want to focus on this um, animation did stop selector. So this is the one that's important to us. So the animation did stop selector is it's what method do you want to call when this animation is done. So let's go ahead and put this into our code. So the one I'm going to choose to put it in on the reset transformation function. So that means that um, whenever I um, click on the reset for the animation, um, when it finishes, so boom, it's done. Um, a function's going to get called, and we're eventually going to have it play a sound. We're going to kind of get both of those pieces in. So what we need to do here is uh, when we're setting up this animation, we're going to say um, set animation, um, and I'm going to hit escape here so I can see all the options for set animation. Um, I want to set the, uh, the did stop um, selector. Uh, so it's this one right here, set animation did stop selector. Um, now when it comes to this selector, um, so this selector has to be of a certain format. Uh, to learn more about the format, um, you can see that it tells you right here it should be of this format. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a control C. Um, it's a command C actually. Um, and so this selector has to be of this form. You can change the name of it. So let's say I <clears throat> change the name to, um, I don't know, reset transform uh, did stop. Uh, but the it must return void um, and it should receive all these parameters. You can actually get away with changing the parameters, but I recommend you just keep the parameters. And then in order to make a selector out of that, um, you leave just the uh, kind of the parts that are in the, the method name. So you delete um, what type of parameter it is um, and the formal parameter name. But you do keep the colons, interesting enough. Um, so the colons are actually part of the selector name, which is important to know. So we're going to set the selector, um, reset transformation did stop, finished context. Another thing that we have to set is we have to set, um, that's the selector that's going to get called, but it doesn't know what object to call that selector on. Um, so we're going to set the um, animation delegate. Um, we want to call it on self. Um, so we want to call self um, 
with this selector. So first let's just make sure it's wired up. Um, so here we've done the two steps um, to say call him when we're done. And then up here, let's just go ahead and print out a, a log message. So the reset uh, transform animation just finished. So if we run this, um, and I rotate it a little bit, um, you can see I've still got some old log messages in here. Um, as soon as it finishes, boom, um, you can see that, that that function gets called, right? Um, so this is going to be a very useful skill for your project. Um, so I wanted to show you this. So we're halfway done now. Um, so this is <coughs> getting a method to get called when you just finish something. The other thing I wanted to show you today was uh, playing a sound. So for playing a sound, the first thing I want to do is I want to go download a sound. Um, I went ahead and stuck a sound, um, I just called it Ship's Bell. Um, so you can click on this link and you can download the sound. Um, it's a little large, it's, <laughs> I didn't, it's like six seconds long, but somehow it's a full meg um, in size. Um, you can see that it's a wave, so it's compressed very poorly. Uh, a lot of ways to uh, get this into your project. Um, and drag and drop is usually the one that I use today. I'll just go ahead and hit um, Option Command A, um, and I'll just uh, navigate to it in my uh, in my downloads. <clears throat> so ship's bell wave. Um, apparently, I've downloaded it three times now, uh, which is fine. Um, I suppose if I want to get the first time I downloaded it <laughs> four times now, um, I'll just uh, grab that one. So I'm adding the sound into my project. So now it's a resource that I have. For playing a sound, there are a lot of different options. Um, we're going to use um, the audio toolbox option. Um, so it's actually a framework. I think this will be the first time we've added another framework. So by default, you get the UI kit, the foundation, and core graphics frameworks. Um, we want to also add the audio toolbox. So right click on the frameworks, say add existing frameworks, um, and we want to add um, the audio toolbox framework. Adding the framework adds it to your project, and that's all well and good, uh, but you also need to import the header um, inside the, uh, the implementation file where you're going to use it. So let's go ahead and scroll up to the top and say import um, audio toolbox You'll notice that uh, we use the angled braces because uh, it's part of the, like, the built-in path um, instead of the double quotes. So double quotes are things that we wrote that are in this app. Um, the angled braces are for things that are um, in the path. I think they may have made it work either way, but this is the way you should do it. Uh, playing an animation, or sorry, playing a sound with the audio toolbox is really nice because it's the exact same every time. Um, and it's the same the same steps. Um, so we're going to create um, a system sound. Uh, I think it's actually a struct under the hood, um, and uh, we're going to call it sound ID. Then the next thing we're going to do um, is we are going to uh, get a path uh, to our sound resource. So we're going to get a path to uh, point to this guy, um, and then we're going to connect uh, the system sound ID to that resource. So we're going to connect the two, right? So pretty, pretty basic steps. We're going to create a sound. We're going to get a path to our resource. Then we're going to connect them, um, and then as the last step, we're going to play the sound. Now, to be honest, these steps are so exactly the same every time you use them um, that I end up just copying and pasting um, from some other project pretty much every time I want to use them. Um, so 
<clears throat> let's go ahead and since I got all this code from the book, we'll copy paste from the uh, from the book's code here. Um, so you should hopefully have saved um, the book's code somewhere to your hard drive. Um, the examples of playing sounds are in a lot of different projects. Uh, one that I happen to remember it's in is in the Pickers project. Um, you haven't actually done the Pickers project yet, uh, but you could still uh, go in and, and do what I'm doing. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to do a search, so Command Shift F. Um, and so I'm going to look for, I remember it's got the word sound ID in there somewhere. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just grab uh, these four lines of code. You can type them uh, just as easily. Um, looks like it changed the order on me. So the first thing we do is we create a uh, system sound. Um, so it's called system sound ID. Um, we get a path to our resource. Um, our resource is not called win. Our resource is called um, this crazy name. Oh, by the way, I meant to say where I got this sound from is I actually got it from a place that I've used a fair amount, um, freesound.org. Um, it's nice because so long as you give credit to the media creator, um, you can use their sounds however you want. And I grab a lot of things from freesound.org. There's probably better sites out there, but this is the one that I've used. Um, and they always get these crazy file names, right? Um, you'll notice that it, I had it, you don't type dot wave here, you say it here, so what type it is. Um, and then <clears throat> in order to connect the two, um, there's this function that connects um, the resource to the sound. Um, and then there's a, there's one that, that hits play sound. The reason I went and copied and placed these is because I have no idea, I never remember what these four lines are because they don't change, right? And so I, d I don't even remember what they are because um, they don't change. So it's a really handy um, thing to have in your pocket. It plays a lot of different sound files. Um, it plays waves. I think it'll do MP3s, um, AIFs, um, CAs, all kinds of things. Um, so if we've got our sound turned on, um, whenever we finish the reset, boom, um, it plays the ship's bell for us. Um, and so that's actually it for today. We, um, <clears throat> we learned about um, animation completion handlers and sounds. Um, so that was it. Short little lecture. Um, you just kind of, you need those two skills for the lab. Um, so I just wanted to, uh, to give them to you. Um, so it's something that you've got in your bag of tricks now. All right. Uh, next time we'll start doing uh, some more crazy stuff. See you then.